Okay. So today we have uh, Dr. Beria Peshashkian. So he is graduated from the Institute for Advanced Studies in Basic Science in Iran. Then in 2015, he did a PhD in the Memphis Center for Biomembrane Physics at the University of South Southern Denmark. From 2018, actually, he became a postdoc at the University of Groningen in Netherlands um, with Professor Marring at the Molecular Dynamics Group. Um, 2021, just two years ago, he became an independent assistant professor at the Amius Niels Bohr Institute at the University of Copenhagen, Denmark. His main research interest, I mean, so far are in membrane biophysics, molecular and mesoscopic modeling. Two of his latest uh, nature communication articles deals with multiscale modeling of biological membranes and their self-assembly process. And today, well, I leave you the floor to introduce your topic, Beria. So I'm happy for this, for this time. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Adolfo. Uh, so my name is Uri Apizeshian, just in case if anybody wanted to know the correct pronunciation, it's very hard. So my work is mostly on multi-scale simulation, but mostly for biomembranes. Here or today, I will be talking about a little bit of a new stuff, in particular, uh, this mesoscale simulation, the software that I just released it a few days ago. Uh, so, yeah, uh, my, uh, my focus at the moment is biomembrane shapes. And you see this, although uh, we know a lot about biomembrane shape for the artificial membrane or simple membrane, but cellular membrane also exhibit a diverse range of shape, in particular in the intercellular, intracellular membranes, like mitochondria in their membrane is quite folded and also Golgi operators, ER, both smooth and rough one. Uh, and this shape has meaning, although by um, cells deform their membrane to perform certain function, but the specific architecture of the uh, membrane also has a specific meaning. For example, here you see that for a mitochondria with high activity, uh, uh, exhibit a distinct morphology from the one that with the low activity. So energy production of them or ATP production of the uh, mitochondria is really well connected to the shape. And another distinct uh, uh, feature of biomembrane are they, they are complex. They are not like model membrane. They are made of one or two type of lipids. They are complex, packed with the, uh, a lot of membrane proteins and so this will make it very challenging to actually model them and understand the shape. So uh, we know that, for example, okay, the main component of every bilayer or every membrane, or maybe it's lipids, they have a hydrophobic group, uh, hydrophilic group, hydrophobic tail, and then they self-assemble into closed surfaces because they can't tolerate a free edge. Yeah, we know simulation can show it, uh, experiment has been observed, so that's it. But, and also to describe the shape, the Halfrich Hamiltonian, at least for the large length scale, has shown to be very, um, yeah, very good. Actually, uh, all this kind of, uh, we know that uh, the modern membranes shows uh, a certain class of shape that they, are, they can be ca uh, categorized into multi uh, spherical structures. And this, the shape of them are dependent on osmotic pressure difference or spontaneous curvature and few model parameters. But going from this to this is quite challenging. And theoretically, possibly we can only get a little bit uh, information about it, in particular because such a complex system, not uh, the shape of it is also get affected by molecular part, by entropy of the um, individual molecules, and so on, and also with the, uh, the so therefore the larger scale is really dependent on a lower scale system. While in a model membrane, you can consider that the system is somehow homogeneous and can simplify it quite nicely. So just to give you a little bit of um, uh, motivation to follow the rest, this is the shiga toxin, and shiga toxin enters the cell through this 
B subunit, the A subunit introduces through the B subunit by binding to the uh, cell plasma membrane and on a model membrane also they induce this tubular membrane vagination in a cell usually the neck get caught and then it enters as a collective uh, with the, uh, like they enter the cell uh, collectively together. But in model membrane, they induce this tubular membrane vagination. And if we want to understand it, we can use a multi-scale simulation technique like this. So we can use all atomolecular dynamic simulations, see how individual protein interact with membrane, induces curvature, how they uh, cluster, they interact with each other. For example, here we know that actually they do not at, uh, attract each other. They do not directly interact, but the interaction is mediated by the membrane. When we allow this information into visual scale simulation techniques, we see that, okay, the tubular membrane vaccination forms, and then the protein is also quite concentrated in the tube part. Uh, we have a now back mapping scheme that allows us to actually back map it to molecular based simulation and also obtain organization of biomolecule of the system. So this is a setup to study such a, uh, a complex system, a membrane plus proteins, and that can, re biomolecules can reorganize themselves within the system. So in a nutshell, so it become a multi-scale simulation technique like this, all atom, allowed to um, coarse grain, coarse grain to mesoscale, mesoscale can be back mapped and then you can obtain experimental data. And my focus is this, to construct this, to make it more efficient and uh, for different other different system. But today I will be only talking about this one and this arrow, the back mapping part. Okay, let's uh, first, what do I mean by mesoscale? So for membrane specifically, a mesoscale is an approach that Explicitly, we consider large biomolecules like proteins. So the protein exists at a particle, at least one particle or a few, but at least with one particle. But the membrane or the lipids are averaged out. So you have a, a density function or, I don't know, a shape or something. So you map um, hundreds of lipids into one interaction site or on, into one density function. So that's why then it is different from coarse grain because there is no definition of single molecules anymore, but also it's different from a macro scale because there are certain molecules explicitly exist. It's not a, uh, averaged out into a density function for the protein density. And uh, so uh, I created this software. This has been actually, for many years I have been working on this, this free, DTS software that allows you to perform simulation using a specific method that I will be introducing now. And then you can also find the source code with tutorials and also with the detailed documentation of how the code works on the GitHub page. Um, so free DTS. Uh, first of all, in a free DTS, a membrane is represented by a triangulated mesh, um, but, which is the set of vertexes, edges and triangles. Each vertex represents a hundreds of lipids or a patch of membrane. So it's not a particle anymore, it's a uh, surface element. And then based, uh, uh, using this triangulated uh, uh, surface, because it has uh, edges, triangles, we, ca we can use a certain geometrical operation to obtain direct at on each vertex, we can obtain directional uh, curvature and also the value of this curvature at each at these two directions. And a normal vector and also an area associated with this vertex. Uh, so we can then we have this, we can use the half free Hamiltonian or any function that is uh, uh, that's a function, any function that is related to these uh, curvatures. So I am using Alfrich Hamiltonian for each vertex because we have them. And then this is the area associated with the vertex. This is the mean curvature, which is the sum of um, the two curvature, this two edge. This is a Gaussian curvature. And this is two moduli. One of them is bending rigidity and a Gaussian modulus. And um, 
usually this doesn't play much role because the surface, the topology of the system remain constant. So the energy per vertex become this, and you, you have your membrane only with the two model parameter plus this C node, which means if the membrane wanted to bend away in a specific direction. So it has a spontaneous curvature. And a protein, a protein is modeled into one single particle that can only be exist on top of each uh, vertex, but it has also an orientation. So it can rotate on top of a vertex and it, uh, yeah, and it can jump, it can rotate. And then it interacts with that membrane at that point, at that vertex that they are on top of it. So the way the interaction with the membrane works, there is two possibilities, uh, mathematically speaking. One of them is when is the symmetric. So like this protein that induces sh uh, shape change in a symmetric way, uh, in plane symmetric way. So that's why the, this amount of energy will be added to the system. So in principle, this means that uh, the bending rigidity increases a little bit, the Gaussian modulus increases a little bit, and also uh, any spontaneous curvature is uh, induced on that specific point of the membrane when the protein sit on it. So it uh, somehow in uh, the protein prefer a specific shape and deviation from that shape cause some energy. So this all these model parameter are not just fitting parameter, but they have a physical meaning. And another one is like bar domain proteins, but, uh, and this protein that induce elongated type of shape. So in one direction, they bend membrane much more than another direction. In this case, uh, the system, uh, uh, you need four model parameter. One of them are just the en uh, energy penalty dependent. So the K1 and K2 is that if the membrane do not, uh, do not bend to the amount that the protein wants, how much in each direction, how much energy uh, penalty is. And then, so since we have the curvature and in each direction, we can obtain curvature in the direction of the protein using the Euler curvature formula. So in each step, when uh, the curvature in the direction of the protein and the perpendicular, the protein will be obtained, put into this equation, and then we find the energy penalty of it. Okay, so now we have uh, membrane, we have membrane protein interaction. Now we need protein protein interaction. So, since it's a called mesoscale, so you don't go with the electrostatics, it's meaningless. So, you have to recast all this molecular detail interaction into certain type of more mesoscale interaction. One of them is the nearest neighbor part. So, if two get close to each other, they absorb each other. So, that will be a this part of it. So it's just completely isotropic and only apply when the two inclusion or the two protein are neighbor. Then another one is... Uh, hi, Beria. So I will interrupt you. So the the, the position of the protein, yeah. does, does it move or it stays in the same place where you define? I mean, can it... Uh, yeah, yeah. So it, jump, it jumps from one vertex to another neighboring vertex. Uh, okay. Yeah, it can jump. It depends on the energy and uh, yeah. Okay. But it doesn't go to the surface of the triangles is uh, because the triangle is only for uh, obtaining the curve energy in the simulation. The triangle doesn't exist. The vertexes only exist. So your space, but the vertexes also can move. So it fills your space. It's not a lattice space actually. It somehow makes it um, more continuous space because the vertexes can span everywhere in the space. Yeah. Okay. And this part is the interaction between the two vertexes. So it depends on the orientation of these proteins. And uh, so, and it's along the geodesic direction. So you have to make a parallel transfer from one vertex to the neighboring vertex and find what is the uh, orientation between uh, these two uh, inclusion and then um, find the interaction between them. And N is how the degree of the symmetry of the protein. For example, if you have a two, uh, um, two bar protein, then th this should be two. If you have uh, something that trimer like an exin, then this sh N should be three. And the last term is the 
on the each vertex there is a normal vector and when these two protein wanted to have this normal ver vector fixed or in a certain part like uh, let's say if you have a two protein with a big head group or big uh, 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 big domains like let's say spike protein and these two a big head group or a big crown don't want to actually be close to each other so they bend the membrane or they tilt respect to each other but this, uh, somehow it says that uh, if the two protein don't in, uh, don't induce curvature when they get to each other also they induce curvature because they want to tilt away from each other so here for example this is one of the example these proteins do not really induce any curvature but because of this type of interaction suddenly the system buds up and this one is uh, the, because of the interaction like the second part so they cluster because they like each other but then they want to be aligned uh, on the surface of the membrane not aligned in the three dimension but on the surface of the membrane and they create this but here the curvature comes from the spontaneous curvature of the protein while here the spontaneous curvature of the protein is zero Okay, so uh, if you go to the um, uh, to the GitHub, download the code, you just run this script, compile, and then it creates all the binary files for you to run a simulation. And then to run a simulation, you just need this binary and an input file and a topology file, then it runs for you. The input file is usually like this. So you just say which type of integrator you use. There is two type, we will increase more. Uh, and also uh, which kind of move you want to have. For example, you can just shut down, let's say protein jumping from one vertex to another one, or you can jump, shut down um, the position update of the vertexes or the link flip of the vertex. So you can, uh, this, uh, here I say, okay, I want them all because I want to, re and then uh, you define uh, steps, steps here, because it's more, it's so far up to now is Monte Carlo. So the step is not really time scale, but it's related as the steps are super small. Uh, and then this is just for visualization. This is for energy output. And then uh, this is for, if you want it to crash or rest, uh, and restart the system, then you have a Kappa. This is Kappa or Gaussian modulus putting at any value doesn't matter because the system is closed. This is the trajectory and uh, that's it. And then you can apply, for example, a uh, frame tension. If you have a PVC membrane, the frame tension can change. Then you can have a dynamic box and adjust the system. You can apply osmotic pressure. You can apply spring force. So you add, so this is all in the manual. You can add different commands. So what you want to add. And then you have a protein definition or the inclusion. You say, for example, two type of protein, four type of protein, although this will be an error because you have to define four, then a three, then you define three. Uh, here, three to, uh, inclusion is defined. There is a name for them. The, uh, the symmetry of the protein, let's say here is one, which is, you can use two, three, any number, uh, all the model parameters that were introduced. Then this part, it says generate in, uh, inclusion for me. You can also have it in the topology file inclusion. If you have it there, then it doesn't generate anymore. But if you don't, then it goes here and generate, and you can remove this, it, it then will be a free membrane. Then you have a protein type of interaction uh, that there is three type of interaction. Each has this kind of uh, parameter. So you can just check which one you want to use the, most, uh, the best. And then the topology file, you have a position of each vertex, which is in a TSI format. You can also have it in a Q format. And uh, these two format also can be read by TS2CG to backmap it, but I will come back to it. So you have a position of the vertexes, then you have each which vertex is connected to which vertex to form a triangle, and all the triangle are uh, should be either clockwise or anti-clockwise. It can't be with respect to the normal. Uh, and then you have the list of the inclusion telling you this inclusion belong to which vertex at that moment. And then you have uh, orientation because it's uh, the orientation is only 2D. So with respect to the uh, 
with respect to that principal curvature. So we said two D vector on the surface of the vertex. So when you have these two files, then you can run a simulation. This is an example, for example, this is a membrane in periodic boundary condition, and then the tension can uh, be changed. Uh, then uh, we can look at the spectrum, fluctuation spe ondulation spectrum of this membrane. And from theory, we know if this is um, freestanding, it will be, uh, it will have a, such a form. So the ondulation spectrum look like this, which the kappa is related to the bending rigidity, but a bit different, this scale is a renormalized uh, value. The tau is the tension. And uh, this tells us if the tension is zero, the membrane will follow, the spectrum follows Q to the minus four, which you can see when the tension is zero, it's like this. When the tension is not zero at small wavelengths, it will, uh, at the small uh, wave uh, vector, it will uh, follow the Q to the minus two, and also at the larger one, it follow Q to the minus four, which is, you can see, this is actually quite consistent with the theory. But uh, in theory, uh, with theory, although with this we can obtain it, for example, even if you have inclusion, it still follow the Q4, interestingly, uh, but different type of inclusion possibly change this, but that's the specific type that we have used um, here, it doesn't. But then if you have, if you sandwich the membrane between the two wall, the large wavelengths or small uh, um, wave vectors, suddenly this fluctuation will be removed. They will be suppressed. So that's why you don't uh, have that anymore. But then the, at the short wave, uh, wavelengths is follow the same uh, theory again. So this is something, for example, theoretically it's super hard to actually model a confined membrane and to obtain this fluctuation. But with this, for example, you can do it. This is just a beginning example. And then you can also look at the shape deformation. For example, if you have a, um, a certain concentration of the protein, as the concentration uh, increases, uh, the type of uh, vesiculation actually increases and become more wild at the high concentration. And when the protein, protein, this is love protein, protein interaction, but when it's high, you can just get a, a pure budding. So it's actually the system follows exactly the spontaneous curvature of the protein, of the individual protein, and the system is completely fully covered by protein. But the, at the intermediate scale, you have a, some sort of phase segregation, high curve region with high concentration of per protein and a flat region with low concentration of the protein. So you have, so somehow entropy plays a lot of role here, while here is just mostly mechanic of the system. And then you can do biophysical experiment, for example, you can pull a tube from a membrane, if, but you have to apply tension. Uh, this is also experimentally is done in many places. Then you can also look at the protein sorting so you have the pulled nanotube or tether, and then you can see, okay, a protein that induces curvature suddenly uh, gets sorted to the curved region. Uh, or you can just run simulation on a tube. You have a tube in a periodic box in one direction. Then if it has a spontaneous curvature, suddenly it makes this kind of multispherical structure. If you have a, this elongated protein, you have this, constricted neck region that the protein uh, uh, polymerize around it or oligomerize around it. If you have other type of protein, suddenly you have a not very well-defined shape, but it's deformed shape. Okay, so just uh, also as an application, for example, this is the experiment done in the uh, case Degel lab uh, with uh, Nikolai. And uh, so they have this nanostar, the nanostar when it's uh, bind to the outside or when it's located at the outer membrane, suddenly it creates these dumbbell shapes. When it's located uh, in the inner membrane, it creates these stomatocyte shapes. Uh, yeah, this is the... Mm -hmm. Then uh, from the DTS simulation with the three DTS, you can immediately see, okay, this is just because this, um, 
mole cores induces curvature. But what is interesting is that when you have dynamine A, suddenly you see this does, uh, so one layer is this nanostars, the other layer will be this uh, dynamine. Here, the inner part is that molecule, the nanostar, but the outer layer, the dynamine binds to the outer layer of the membrane. And then in both scenario, or this one is inner layer, in both scenario, they clusters there in the neck, but nothing, they just cluster there. While for FTSZ, you see the neck get elongated. So from simulation, we could see, okay, in the case of a uh, stomatocyte structure, if the uh, uh, protein induced negative curvature and bind from outside, these shapes form. So this elongation happens. But if the protein induces positive curvature, but they should be also elongated type of protein. So from this, we could see, okay, the, our protein dynamic or uh, uh, FTSZ, either FTSZ, for example, make a filament, or they are elongated, or from here also with dynamic. And also, even if you have the same scenario with the dynamic negative curvature, so we know it induces negative curvature, and also a binding from outside is also oligomerized around the neck. Uh, while for the, well, for the, uh, this is FTS, sorry, this was a dynamic, but the positive curvature is just go to the neck and then, um, yeah, accumulates there mostly. So it don't elongate the neck or do not expand it. Okay, so another one is this hygienist membrane, for example, let's say most of the system that we usually think about is um, genus one, a zero, which is like a sphere completely closed and by, we have a donut shape and higher genus system. And this topological genus does not change by bending. So it's a, uh, and in the membrane context, it can only be changed by fusion and fission processes. Let's say, for example, but uh, intracellular mem membrane, like for example, ER or mitochondria, we calculated for a real mitochondria, is the genus is around 45, meaning 45 handles, or for with the ER, possibly much around. A lot, like thousand and ten thousand. But just if you have this hygienist membrane and you have some of this uh, protein, and you can see you create, you get a structure similar to this kind of um, ER membranes. Uh, or another example is that if you have a this hygienist membrane, then you have some of this protein floating on the membrane. They will assemble in the neck together and make it, uh, they assemble into the neck and then create membrane similar to the nuclear pore membrane. So somehow suggesting that nuclear pore membrane may not be double membrane, it's only a single membrane with the hygienist one that nuclear uh, com uh, nuclear complex actually assemble around it due to the topology of the membrane. Okay, and then you have other structure, you can study them, uh, different genesis, and then from 1D suddenly it become space filling 3D structure. Uh, okay, so this was the uh, DTS one. So you can run all this kind of, or you can play with them. It's run on a single core. You can actually run it on a desktop machine, many of them and get good result with it. Um, for quite enough large system, it may take a week to get a proper sampling of certain structure, but I think uh, doable for uh, doing research. Uh, then is the, the TS2CG, which actually allows us to take DTS simulation structure and then backmap it to molecular based resolution. And it came with the algorithm that we can expand smoothly the surface of the, these triangles. Uh, and then, so the, it, it has multiple steps. It creates, first it creates the monolayers, then it expands the surface to put individual lipids, and then put the protein first, remove that. Uh, points that the protein occupies and then put lipid around it finally. And then you can need a equilibration a little bit and then uh, yeah, MD run for the system. For example, you can see we have this uh, from the DTS, we got this for the Shiga in this tubular invagination. We could back map it to molecular based one. You can see how 
the biomolecule organized on this tube structure. To, uh, or um, nowadays we can actually, for example, allow more experimental data using it, for example, getting uh, from electron microscopy data, phase segregated membrane, give this information to the uh, the uh, TS2CG and then it creates molecular based architecture for you with the, any composition that you want. Even you can have a protein and then you can have any, in principle, any shape with any uh, with any composition. You can build it if you are patient enough to set it up. Um, yeah, or you can actually pick up a structure from uh, cryo-electron tomography, build that triangulated surface, run it through TS2CG, and then build a realistic membrane shape. Uh, realistic membrane shape. This is the mitochondria one, and we could actually, the structure is, is, uh, is, is so you don't have much clashes that allows you to simulate this. We simulated only for two nanoseconds, of course, but as a proof of concept, but we could run it for longer, but here you don't have the protein, eventually it will deform. Uh, but the point is the system is stable and is simulatable, which is not easy if you have been working with Lorna Jones interactions, you know why. Okay, this one is for real application, for example, it's not proof of concept anymore. This one is a, um, COVID or SARS-CoV-2 envelope, so you run uh, just to build a molecular basis structure of it is quite not easy. So you can model it with the three type of protein using the uh, DTS system. You have uh, spike protein, you have uh, M-dimers and E-pentamers, and then run a DTS simulation to obtain the organization of these myomolecules and the shape of the system, and then back map it to um, look at basic structure. Okay. Okay. It doesn't run, but I can run it for you like this. Okay. Now it's working. So you can then you will find them. Um, yeah. Okay. It's still not working. But anyway, um, you can find the organization of the biomolecule on the envelope and then quite well equilibrated and stable system. Okay, so you can see that uh, here in particular, here we, we cut some of the crown of the spike to run it for longer time. And you can see how crowded it is actually with protein, the white R protein. And building such a thing just by normal placement always lead to some clashes and then uh, you're never gonna equilibrate the system or even minimize it possibly. But here you can see, and then we see this kind of tile formations that are consistent with the experimental data on the SARS-CoV-1. I see, okay, yeah. So actually I was, it seems I was a little bit fast, but this is my last slide and then I am open for discussion. Um, so actually this free DTS plus the TS2CG plus software like uh, called Polyply and many other allows us to eventually simulate realistic uh, systems or cell size system like full cell or even full mitochondria or thing from uh, mesoscale system. So you have the experimental data, you load it into mesoscale, you find organization of the system and uh, you have quite get uh, some knowledge of the system and then you can use these softwares to back map it into molecular based simulation and then by a little bit of shake like few hundred maybe microsecond simulations or maybe half a hundred microsecond simulation you can find the organization of the biomolecule in it so large distance or slow uh, slow motions for the equilibration can be done by uh, these mesoscale techniques, and then you can load it or back map it to the you know, molecular based simulation to obtain a real equilibrated system. And so, yeah, that will be. I would like to thanks all uh, people that I have been collaborating and working with, and also the foundation that are supporting my group at the moment, uh, both Marie Curie Novo Nordis Foundation and in particular, 
uh, independent research fund Denmark. And thank you all for your attention. And you can reach me on Twitter or through email anytime that you want. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.